Greetings from the Good Shepherd Church. My name is Terry Furlow. I'm the host for Wellness Wednesday for the five Wednesdays in March 2021. Wellness Wednesday is a program at the Good Shepherd Church in which we look at lifestyle changes to truly improve our health and to improve our Christian mission. The topics for this March are good balance for good health. We're looking for developing a balanced lifestyle in all of our daily habits. And we're also gonna look at a good balance for an exercise program to develop a healthier heart. So building a healthier heart is really the focused point for today. Remember this information is for educational purposes and pur purposes of spiritual growth. Everything that we will do are geared for the person of average health. If you feel that any of this is too much for you, don't do it. If you really feel that you have a problem accomplishing these tasks, you may want to see a physician and develop a rehabilitation program, an exercise program that really fits your needs. To start out this talk, let's talk generally about promoting good health. There are certain things that we can act actively do that will make our body healthier. There are some things about bodily health that we cannot actively change by ourselves through conscious effort. Sometimes we can pray for miraculous healing, which may or may not be granted. But a good starting point for improving personal health is a serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We're gonna be talking about those things which have been proven to change your health, to change your life. When we talk about the lifestyle aspects of promoting a healthy heart, we're really talking about improving your entire cardiovascular system, which is composed of your heart, all the arteries and veins that circulate blood through your body. The lifestyle issues that can improve a healthy heart, as with most things, starts with your, your diet, your nutritional plan. Last week, we talked about a healthy diet in general. What we really talked about at that time was the American Heart Association guidelines. A healthy heart diet with American Heart Association is a set of guidelines to address a well-balanced diet and address specific issues which keep the heart healthier. The first section of that involves keeping the diet low in calories, taking no more calories than you really need. Extra calories promote higher blood sugars, promote higher uh, body weight eventually lead to heart disease. You want your diet low in salt. Low sodium diets have about 2000 milligrams of sodium total in the day. You can read labels, you can stop using a salt shaker on the table, and you'll find that if you're used to highly salty foods, gradually drop it back and you'll find that you can dramatically decrease the sodium in your diet over a few months. A heart healthy diet is low in sugar. And we're mostly talking about those added sugars, sugars that are put in commercially to make food taste sweeter or using a lot of sugar on the table in your, your recipes. There are great ways to make food taste well without adding a lot of sugar. You can use products like Stevia and Splenda to avoid putting a lot of unnecessary calories into your food. You also want a diet that's low in excess fat, particularly animal fat. We want to limit those, trim them off, not fry foods with animal fat. Those, first, those starting points will make your diet healthier for your heart. A healthy heart diet has plenty of fruits and vegetables. At least half of your plant foods should be plant-based, like legumes, beans, and nuts. You can have two servings of fish a week. That's been shown actually to protect the heart. 
make most of your animal meats, poultry or fish. You can have beef, preferably no more than two times a week. And with that, the extra fat should be trimmed off and it should be baked or broiled. All of these aspects of your diet will make you healthier. The second part of a healthy lifestyle to protect your heart involves daily exercise. We're really talking about six days a week, 30 to 60 minutes. It's best to schedule your time so that you have it worked into your plans. You have to be flexible because things happen in life. If something gets in your way one day, plan on doing your exercise later. You may obviously have to avoid it certain days, but try to work up to a six day a week schedule, at least 30 minutes at a time. Many people go to 60 minutes. 60 minutes, three, six days a week is certainly a good maximum. We're trying to keep your whole lifestyle well balanced. Healthy exercise that has been shown to protect the cardiovascular system, aerobic exercises, like walking, swimming, stationary cycle, elliptical glider, things that just get you breathing more easily, using more oxygen, burning calories, and that workload on the cardiovascular system will make you healthier. The second type of exercise that's been shown to protect the heart are strength training exercises. No one's really sure exactly why this happens. But think about strength training exercises. We're talking about using hand weights as a starting point. You want to do repetitive exercises. You can do smoothly and evenly at least 20 times, maybe 30, 40, or 50 times. You may want to do two repetitions of 20 uh, exercises, whatever works for your mindset. You really want to work the arm, muscles in the shoulders and the arms. the muscles on your abdominal wall and back, the muscles in your legs, your thighs and calves. And if you have a plan, that'll be 20 to 30 minutes, three days a week, three alternating days, because you don't wanna do strengthening exercises two days in a row. It tends to work the muscles too hard. Start with one or two pound hand weights. If that's too much, Start with two cans of tuna fish, four ounces each, just to keep it simple. You'll find that you'll gradually find weights that will work for you. For the average person, five to 10 pound weights is as heavy as you go. Very few people can go safer above five to 10 pound hand weights. Find the amount that gives you an adequate workout that you can do 20 repetitions easily and smoothly and then you eventually have the right weight. You might find over several months, so you'll adjust the weight some, but you're not looking for maximal strength. Strength, strength muscle strengthening exercises were shown by a study over 20 years ago that in adults who routinely exercise that way, there is less heart disease as life goes on, even comparing two groups of equal age, equal education and equal exercise on aerobic and other exercise plans. After controlling for all of the factors, strength training exercises added an, added an extra benefit for heart protection. A study out of the UCLA Medical Center this winter showed that adults who had better muscle development had less cardiovascular disease than people who had smaller muscles, atrophic muscles from disuse or, or ignoring, ignoring them in your body. You might have seen commercials on TV that using this hand grip exercise repeatedly every day will lower your blood pressure. It's very likely that these strengthening exercises that weight load gently, the arteries in your body, train your cardiovascular system to become healthier. Get this type of balanced exercises in your life and very likely over the years, you'll see the benefit. Besides these type of lifestyle things that you do on your own, 
you should also develop a plan for more advanced heart protection that you have to do with a personal physician. That's routine checking of your blood pressure. All adolescents and all adults of every age should check their blood pressure at least once a year, even if you think your blood pressure is fine. Blood pressures can change any one year. If your blood pressure is borderline high or higher, you'll check your blood pressure once a month, once a week, and even once a day, depending on the type of treatment that you need. But you cannot interpret and treat blood pressures on your own. You really have to get advice on that. The second standard treatment for medical advice are blood sugars. If your average daily blood sugar is 100 to 125, you have prediabetes. If you have just two blood sugars fasting on two separate days of 100 or higher, you have prediabetes. That increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. As you may know, diabetes mellitus, which is that average blood sugar of 126 or higher, greatly increases cardiovascular disease. So all the blood sugars are on a spectrum for either going up and having higher risk, more disease, or trying to bring it down and having it routinely below 100 where your disease risk is low. Everyone has probably also heard about cholesterol levels. Cholesterol levels should probably be checked every three years through adult life, even if you think you're perfect. Cholesterol levels can change. It can all of a sudden genetically change just like your gray hair does on almost everyone. And you'll all of a sudden have a higher cholesterol level. Certain levels of cholesterol need treatment. Always the first treatment is through dietary changes, People who have high cholesterols, despite that, may need eventually go on medications, which can markedly decrease the risk of having heart attacks and strokes. So those are three basic internal changes that happen that we need to monitor regularly. Have routine visits with a physician and really keep yourself healthy. But we also know about other aspects of heart health. One is tobacco, which probably is the greatest cause of heart disease in the United States. If you use tobacco products, please visit, visit a physician and develop a plan to stop smoking. There are medications now that can greatly decrease the urge to smoke. Many patients can finally succeed and stop smoking after their fifth or even their 10th attempt. So every year you need to keep trying and you'll eventually get successful. So these are many of the, li the standard lifestyle changes that help protect your heart and keep you healthy. Let's now demonstrate some of the exercise plans and get into a routine for keeping our health healthy on a physical basis with exercise. We're gonna start off today just doing some light exercises. Please join me if you can. As we mentioned, the best aerobic exercise to start with is just walking. And the great news about walking is it's inexpensive. You can do it most every place, even in your home. If the weather's bad outside or it's too late after work, just walk in place. There are a lot of aerobics classes that walk in place as part of the routine. Lift up one foot, try to get up six inches and then the other. You might think, well, this isn't aerobic. This is pretty easy, but you'll find after a few minutes, usually your legs will start getting tired and you will start breathing harder. If you feel you can only do five or 10 minutes the first time, then limit it, rest, maybe repeat it. Eventually get to 10 or 20 minutes at a time with walking in place, walking around the block, swimming, finding a stationary cycle or elliptical glider can be great ways for aerobic exercise. A great way to be consistent with walking in place is turning some music on in the background. You'll keep your rhythm better, always find some good music that keeps you stimulated and keeps you from getting bored. 
And while the music is playing, just go through your routine. You can read a book while you're walking. You can talk on the phone while you're walking. And you certainly will get healthier. As we also mentioned, many people like to do two or three different types of exercise, alternate days and have a variety. They will give you different conditioning amounts. And let's stop. When you exercise, if you check your pulse ahead of time, you might find that it'll be 60 or 70, a pretty average pulse. After aerobic exercise, you generally wanna get your pulse rate up to about 100, no higher than 120. We're not looking for winning the bluegrass 10,000. We're just talking about getting some aerobic stimulation in your body to get you metabolically healthier. You might find also after you get consistent with your aerobic exercise after a few months, your resting heart rate will drop 10 points. So monitoring this, get some advice if you think you need it from a physician, but really get a plan and get with it. Whether you're real self-motivated, you do it at your home, that's great. If you need to work with a specialist, a trainer to get going, but find to get a program that works, schedule it in, and it will pay great dividends over time. The second exercise that we talked about is the strength training exercises. Let me get out my two pound hand weights. And once again, it's usually best to start with your upper body. Start with curls where you're working out the biceps muscle in the arm. Do your repetitions of 20, 30. Maybe repeat two series of these repetitions, getting your arm moving. You can move to military presses where you bring them up, go straight up over your shoulders. Using these light weights, the joints don't get hurt. You work out the muscles. You'll actually be more functional with your upper body, but you're also protecting your heart at the same time. You can also lay on your back, push straight up out of the chest. It's often called a bench press. Those are three of the basic upper body exercises. Notice when you grab these hand weights, though, you're also working your grip strength which likely does help protect your heart and builds better forearm strength. To build the abdominal wall, just lay down on your back. Tighten up your muscles. Try to lift your feet barely off the ground. Hold it for a count of 10, a count of 20, or a count of 30, whatever works for you. Rest for a few seconds and repeat it again. For your back, lay down on your stomach, stretch out your arms and stretch your legs, and then tighten up your back, lifting your hands and feet off of the floor or off of a mat if you have a good mat to work with. The last series of exercises we'll work on are the leg muscles, and we can just use this chair. I'm balancing on the chair right now, keeping my back straight, my head up, and we're gonna pretend we're sitting on a chair behind us, but there's no chair there. We just go halfway down, hold it for a count of 10. This has some isometric component. All my leg muscles, particularly through the fire, tightening up and working and back up. But if you go down, 10 times and hold it to 10. Then you've got a couple minutes of strengthening exercises for your thigh muscles. That will promote better strength and more fitness. The last exercise for your lower legs is just to go up on your toes. Hold it for a count of 10. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back down. Go back up. And back down. Please write out your own plan. Develop a plan that lasts for 20 to 30 minutes. Make sure you do a number of repetitions. You don't work with heavy weights. With your aerobic activity, make sure you do a constant activity, eventually up to 30 minutes a day to really feel like you're winded. Maybe have your heart rate up to 100 or so. And just feel good about it. You'll find that if you're really out of shape, that over a few months, your capacity for so many activities will be better. And you'll gradually pick up what you can do and pick up your exercise program itself. It's been good to work with you today. Changing the lifestyle with an improved nutritional plan, the American Heart Association guidelines physical exercise, monitoring your blood sugars on a regular basis, monitoring your blood cholesterol and monitoring your blood pressure requires professional help. Also look for those other habits you need to change, particularly in using tobacco. There have been some programs that have compared people who have these type of fitness programs, these total package programs for the balanced lifestyle for health, those that have the healthy skills generally live 10 years longer with better health and better mental health. This program does improve the entire body's health. Next week, we're going to talk about good balance for sleep and rest and good balance for avoiding falls. We've already talked about some of the skills to avoid falls. We're gonna look at it more comprehensively next time. Please keep working with me on these Lenten disciplines. Gradually build your lifestyle to truly reflect good health. Keep you more capable of helping your family, more capable of helping your friends, more capable of carrying out your missions for the church. I'll see you next Wednesday.